Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today I want to spend a few minutes talking about the Add Items button in Wardrobe. Uh, this is a button, uh, a feature that has undergone pretty significant changes over the past several months. Um, and it's really integral to how we get things done. And so I thought we would start off this new quick tip series by just taking a quick look at that button and what it does and how we can use it. So let's switch over to wardrobe quick. And here we are. And what we're really looking at today is the add items button. And you may recall in the past that there were a set of import options. Um, for importing from your disk or importing from marketplace or different areas but all of that now is in this one add items button so from here you can do pretty much everything you need to do for uploading uh, generally so let's go ahead and click on that and take a look at what is in this box so the first thing I want to talk about is up here at the top we still have the same four ways uh, four options for images that we've had in the past. So you can click the more button if you don't see all four, but it'll give you the option to have one, two, three, four images. And unlike in the past where you had to go into a specific upload method in order to upload them, now we can upload by browsing our local computer, using a URL, or using the UID of a full perm photo from Second Life all in one place. And the nice thing is you can actually use a different method in each one of the four images, whatever works for you. Uh, the URL can be used to upload things from Marketplace. So if you have the uh, URL of a Marketplace entry, you can paste it into there and Wardrobe will go out and find the picture associated with that item on Marketplace. You can also use the URL if you use a tool like Gazo or ShareX or anything else to upload images to the web. Take a uh, quick screenshot and paste it in there. Uh, UUID, of course, comes from uh, full perm pictures directly in the viewer. Uh, let's take a quick look, though, at Browse for Image, because there's one other nice thing that's been added to images, and I want to make sure everyone understands what this does. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. This is going to let me find an image on my computer. And in this case, I just have this image here, uh, Becky dress that I picked up uh, at an event a couple weeks ago. So let me click on that and choose open. Now you'll notice, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll notice that part of the image here is gray along the edges and um, part of it is kind of in color here in the middle. And that's because all images that get uploaded in to wardrobe are always square. And so for a long time, we've told people, make sure you make your image square before you try to upload it or it will get cut off. Uh, but now you can actually upload an image of any dimensions that you want. It can be rectangular. It can be, um, you know, it can be actually a square. I guess those are really the only two, but it could be a vertical rectangle or a horizontal rectangle. And what you get, if you look at this, there are some little drag arrows inside here. And you can actually drag this up and this part down, and you can make it so that it will use this whole image. And the checkered parts at the top and the bottom, those are gonna be filled in with a default color that you can set in your preference. Uh, by default, it's white, but you could make it gray or pink or whatever you wanted it to be. Uh, but this way now, you can actually um, focus in on those things. And as a matter of fact, if you want to, you can actually drag this around and you can actually dra uh, uh, pick it up and hold down your left mouse button and move it as well. Uh, but you could actually take and, and make it so that you're only getting just a part of the image. If I only wanted the, the pictures of each of the dresses, I didn't want to have uh, her sample with it. I could actually kind of line it up like that. And then when I upload this to wardrobe, it's only going to take what's in that highlighted area. So that's pretty neat. <clears throat> it's a great new feature and um, it allows you to crop and sort of select the part of the image that makes the most sense. You can also just make it full. Okay, so the next thing that's a little bit different is for our title. And of course, titles are super important. We wanna make sure they always match. To facilitate that, we now have the ability to configure a base folder inside of RLV from which we can start to pull items as we're wardrobing them. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this here. This is the button at the end. And it's going to give me a list of all of the folders inside of my RLV folder. 
And I've set up one here called working, and I put it with a couple exclamation points so it's always right at the top. And that's where I put the items that I'm working on. So I'll go ahead and choose that. And when I do that, I can come here and I can click refresh if I want to. Um, but if I click here, I'm going to see a list of all of the uh, folders that are already in that working folder. Let's jump back over to Second Life quick because I want to show you what this looks like. I just want you to notice that there are only four items showing here. So let's go back into Second Life quick and let's open up my inventory. And here's my ROV in working and you'll see that it's got one, two, three, four, five different items. But basically it's going to show you the names of the folders that are in here. And so if I set up a folder in here to be the name that I want it to be as my matching folder, well then I don't have to guess anymore. I can just automatically pick it up and get it to work. But what you'll notice also is that, like I said, I have five here and we were only seeing four. One of the things you have to watch out for, and we, we talk about this a lot, um, is sometimes the punctuation, non-alpha characters you might use in these names, will make it so they don't show up in that selector. So in this case, my uh, GG top um, here has these two slashes in it. And because it has the two slashes, it's not going to show up in that list. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and just rename this quick. Press F2 on my keyboard. That's how you rename quick on Windows. And I'm just going to get rid of those two slashes for right now. Uh, but this is a really nice way for you to kind of go in, preset up your folders, give them the name that you want them to be, and then it will just allow you to pick them right up. So let me go back over here and we're going to go ahead and click. Remember, we had the four here before. I'm going to go ahead and click refresh and click this down again. And now it's got five. So it's got that one that was missing before. And it was missing because of the slashes. Um, obviously, there's a lot of punctuation in special characters in uh, this title. And like I said, sometimes they work. My advice to everyone is just always to try and avoid using those in your matching folder names. You'll be much better off. Uh, you won't end up with those weird cases. All right, so uh, we have all of these here, so I can choose one that I want to be for my title. Tags, pretty much the same. Uh, they've done a lot of work to make the suggested tags more useful. Uh, as you uh, use wardrobe more, it will do a better job of hopefully suggesting to you which tags make sense for the item that you're trying to put on. Uh, the creator field, if you're not familiar with this, wardrobe has a um, brand directory and it is tied to this creator field here. And the brand directory is basically a way for you to look up information about <clears throat> a particular brand, whether it's their marketplace link, who the actual designer is, where their Flickr is. And if you were to select um, an entry here, it will actually include those things in your entry in wardrobe. So for example, um, the title I have here is for Gaia. So I can go ahead and type in that. And it's going to bring up all of these different things. You need to make sure you choose the right one. I'm actually not sure which one it is, so I'll just choose one here. But this works for pretty much any store. And um, if you don't know where this is, um, let me see here. Where is the right blueberry? There she is. Uh, if you don't know where this is in wardrobe, you can come up to your tools menu and go to the brand directory. And inside the brand directory is all of these different brands. And like I said, you can add these to any of your entries as a way to track your creators. Uh, you can search it here. And if you see one's missing, you can go ahead and add it as well. All right, remarks pretty much unchanged. Subfolders. Oh, there is actually a feature of subfolders that's different than it used to be. But we need to pop back into inventory to see how this works. Or, so let's go ahead and jump back into Second Life. And we're going to use this same example that I have here. And this is actually the top that I'm wearing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some subfolders under this subfolder. Um, I'm going to create one called Petite for the Matreya Petite size. And I'm going to create one called uh, Lara, just for the regular Lara size. And I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at that for now. We don't need to create them all for this example. So I'm going to go ahead and move the regular Lara one into there. I'm going to move the petite one into there. So now I've got two subfolders under here. Once again, let's jump back into wardrobe. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. And I'm going to change it quick over here to the bombshell. 
and then I'm going to change it back to Gaia so we get this loaded up. So now, if you notice, if you saw it there at the bottom, uh, and let me do this again so you can see it. So watch this subfolders box. I'm going to change it to Bombshell. There's no subfolders there, so that's going to be empty. When I change it back to Gaia, it actually goes out and reads the subfolders that you created. So if you have a bunch of different subfolders, uh, they'll be all right there, and you can just click them to add them in whatever makes sense. So that's a nice new feature. Uh, rating, pretty much the same. Visibility, public, private, pretty much the same. Actually, 100% the same. Uh, these options here, again, you can set them how you want, uh, but they're really not changed. Auto strip, the same. Wearing policy, the same. Tell it to add or replace or just use your preference. Uh, the ability to put on a base outfit is really unchanged. Uh, but then we get into another area that's got, got quite a bit that has changed. So for quite a while now, we've had the put on more outfits option. This basically allows you to chain a couple of different wardrobe entries together. Uh, so for example, if you have a shirt and um, some pants that go together, but you have two separate entries in wardrobe, you could set it up so that when you wear the shirt, it always wears the pants, or when you wear the pants, it always wears the shirt. And you would do that by choosing one of the more outfit options in this box. But we've added two additional things that I think are really, really helpful. And the first is take off when attaching. <clears throat> so you can use this to do um, all sorts of interesting things. Probably the one that kind of sticks out to me the most is if you have more than one mesh head or mesh body. Um, it, it's just a good example of it, I think. It's not the only use case. But let's say that you have a Catwa head and a Luca head and you want to be able to switch back and forth of them, um, one way that you could do that would be to go to the entry for, say, your Leluca head, and in the take off when attaching, you can say, take off my Catwa head. And you could do the same by going to the Catwa head entry and tell it to take off the Leluca. And there are lots of different ways that you could do this. Um, <clears throat> you know, just kind of experiment with the types, um, the times when it might be useful to remove something you're wearing before you put on something new. <clears throat> the last one we have is put on after detaching. And this one is really awesome to me. So um, this would allow you to go through and create <clears throat> almost like a default. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to make sure that you never showed up as topless or at least you only showed up as topless for a very short amount of time. And maybe you had sort of a default bra or something like that that you always wanted to put on on top. Or maybe you have a default hair that you always want to go back to when you remove the hair that you're wearing. Um, what this allows you to do is set something to t put on after you've taken this item off. So you know, if this was a shirt, you could set maybe a, an apply or a bake sun mesh bra to go on automatically when you take that shirt off. If it was um, a hair that's not your favorite hair, you could set it so when you take it off to put on your favorite hair again. Again, lots of different options. These two new features really make automation inside a wardrobe a lot easier uh, because you can start to set up combinations of things to put on and take off um, and and so on as you get dressed and really start to you know automate everything that you do. So these three things together, there's one really important point I want to make about this. These only work if you use wardrobe to dress and undress. Um, if you go into your inventory and you right click and detach something, it's not going to work. If you use some other RLV method to remove something, it's not going to work. It has to be through wardrobe, add, remove through wardrobe in order for these three things to work. And that's just to make sure that we don't always have to be constantly checking to see whether you're adding or removing something and, and where it, it takes place. So that's an important part of these. <clears throat> so that's pretty much everything. Um, we're not obviously walking through here how to actually do this, but I wanted to spend a couple of minutes just talking about uh, how this uh, feature has changed because it is significantly different and it's a lot more functional than it used to be. Um, 
So it's something definitely to get in and play with. And if you didn't know what all these new features did, hopefully you can see that now. Um, and having that sort of that working folder or that pre-staging folder, along with the ability to pull in the subfolder names, I think is super duper useful um, and, and, and helpful for getting things automated. Anyway, this is just the first in a series of new videos that I want to do. So thank you for tuning in and I will uh, catch you in the next video. Bye.